this one game I was practicing with a fellow caster. We were testing out Bruiser bots. I really wanted to play Nunu, and he first picked Mordekaiser. And <laughs> we, to credit, we didn't we didn't do well in lane, but we didn't lose. <laughs> we won the game, and uh, we handled the pressure. So it definitely Nunu, Nunu Mordekaiser new meta uh, is what we're going to be expecting. But it looks like we will be getting into we will be getting into the game soon. And from what we know, this team's hopefully it isn't, you know, it's going to be like a one-sided one sided pub stomp because I would really actually like a competitive game tonight. And it looks like we are getting into it. Yep, and we're going to start this friendly game. This should be interesting. We do have some lower levels on the side of Zuckerbergs. So this is going to be an interesting game. As you said, hopefully it's not a pub stomp coming out on the side of TPS High School. But we're going to look at the first band coming out. Let me Tristana. Now, Tristana does have some validity to her. Despite what everyone talks about, about AD carries, range AD carries not being strong, they can work if you stole out. And remember, this isn't Korea. This isn't the LCK. This isn't the LPL or the OCS or whatever. This is High School Esports League. These are players who perhaps aren't the strongest at closing out games, perhaps don't fully know how to use these bruiser bot lanes. So, yes, in a if you look at the, you know some of the world's best players, this as a ban, people would scoff at, but it makes sense. So it, it does definitely fit. On the other side, though, there's a ban that 100% for most people looking at the game makes sense. As we're seeing the Marcy and the Nasus taken away. <laughs> yeah, they were watching the previous game. <laughs> they do not want to see a Nasus or a Yi, as those two can scale hard into the lane game. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening. Like, I've been listening. The Mordecai Zanunu is not allowed. That's a bit unfortunate. But the Nasus and the Marcy make sense. Nasus late game scaling monster. You can single handedly tear teams apart if you get to that point in late game. On the other side, Marcy, I think everyone's played against the Fed Marcy at one point in their life, and they've known the utter horror it is to try and click on the champion to get your one bit of crowd control down onto him and realize he's Alpha Strike for the third time in a single team fight. So <laughs> get rid of that champion, deny. On the other side, we've got Ari and the Zaya taken away as well. So I got a little because. Of all champions to first pick in, Evelyn was not anywhere near my list. This is going to be interesting. Level 6, Invisibra. In, Ooh. Indeed, uh, Alistair, Alistair tells me a double bruiser bot is coming. Alistair is the almost the key marker of a double bruiser bot because he engages. He does a fantastic job of making that engage. So I would be unsurprised to see something like a Darius, maybe an Orn, maybe some form of bruiser bot lane is what I'm seeing from this house. Now, this is more than likely a sign on top, but it could go bottom. So I, I will hold... Oh, we're seeing all kinds of fun oh, things I here. Oh, I love this. This is so interesting. So we already have three AP champions right now. I mean, Kale, really AP, could go AD hybrid, which is what I usually build on Kale, but... You're disgusting. I am very disgusting. I play Predator Quinn. Shut up. Yes, I take it. <laughs> but we do have a Caitlyn Locket as well. So, Caitlyn's quite interesting. Part of the reason why everyone talked about these AD carry changes was Caitlyn. Caitlyn was not single-handedly, but everyone looked at Caitlyn as an example of really strong AD carries that really don't have a weakness. Like, yes, when you come to late game, there are other AD carries that do her job better, but she like she's a fantastic strong early game. And she gets her three item spike is, yeah, where other AD carries start to take over from her, but she's still insanely strong. So if they can get Caitlyn to her three items, she's going to get online because the new Infinity Edge does more damage than the old Infinity Edge. And a little surprised to see the Jin ban coming out, unless I've, heard, I've seen Caitlyn mid, armor penetration. Lethality, Caitlyn mid. Lethality, Caitlyn. Lethality, Caitlyn mid. You get a tier of the goddess first item. You then go into your Dust Blade of Drakthar and your Edge of Night. You actually do a ton of damage. So that's dirty. It's, it's a possibility. You never know. I've seen Kaiser, one of these last hyper carries, taken away. Tom Kench, the catfish, denied from the rift uh, for the side of TPS High School. And the final ban, Tika. What do you think it's going to be? I am hoping that they keep Zoe open so we can see a battle start. All right. Oh. So Zoe is left open as the Sona is taking them away. They were indeed probably watching the last game where we saw we saw the Yi, we saw the Nasus, we saw the Sona all coming out to play. Oh. So Oh Kha'Zix would be a very interesting choice here. No, but can. no, they go for the cane. I quite like the cane. <gasps> yes! Okay. Um take a deep breath, Tico. This is I don't know. 
I suspect this might be a Quintal. Okay, so here's what well, you but, have to do. But, but no, we'll, we'll hold your breath until we know where it's going. Okay, let's let's hold our let's hold our predator top Tico around until we until we know where it's going. Okay? Talon on the other side, so that means it's definitely Talon. So on the side of TPS, quite a standard comp. Nothing overly surprising if you look at their lineup. So you've got a tank in the top lane. You've got a double engage in the bot lane. Uh, so you've got a tank in the top lane. You've got Alistair, Alistair Caitlyn in the bot lane, which is honestly standard. You've got an assassin in the mid lane, which does make sense right now because a lot of champions are quite squishy. And then you've got the Kane mid, who Kane jungle, I apologize, who can either go for this tankier build of going into Rast, or he can go for the Shadow Assassin. But this lineup, I think... Actually, going to Shadow Assassin, it could work other than the Kale. So that makes a lot of sense. On the side of uh, the Zuckerbergs, we're seeing quite an interesting one. And if I recall correctly, Zuckerberg, we have seen them previously. This was the team that had a lot of struggles in week one. If you recall, the 45-2 and two game. Oh, that was that against was the, Apple was, Cross. Yes, yeah, so that was against Apple Cross. Okay. This is the Zuckerberg. So this is the exact same team now. I could have a look at their players. It, it looks, Garen. Did they pick Garen? No, they did not. But it looks like there's one annoying game of play Draven that he did last game. So that's a little unsurprising. Venosaurus was the mid laner, so that's... Oh, okay. So this is probably a Quinn mid, I think. Okay. Assuming, because Venus has played mid lane, Fizz, in their first week match. So this tells me that this is going to be a Fizz... This is going to be a, a mid lane Quinn, purely because this is their mid laner from their first week. Yeah. So that's probably a safe assumption to make. Yeah, there we go. Um, their top lane new Wiz played Malphite in week one as well. So it's just, this, is a, this is a new Wiz champion. This is his. This is his rock in the top lane. So that's definitely the jungle from last week. Played Warwick Tentaculus. He's now moved on to Evelyn. So he's still got his unconventional summoner spells. He's got heal smite, which I think he did in the previous week with the. I think he went ghost smite with Warwick. Although I do not recall for the life of me. And then we had, they had a support kale. It appears that they've either swapped out. The, they've either swapped their support. They've or they've gotten a different name, but other than that, it is the exact same lineup as the previous, as the first week, and very similar champions. Yeah, it's very similar. One thing I've noticed about the Squin doesn't have ghosts. That's the first problem that this <laughs> Quinn has had. This Quinn has. You have to take ghost on Quinn. Maximum movement speed. Okay. Ghost, flash. Right. Okay, and you're gonna have predator ghosts. as well. You're gonna have predator. Okay, so predator Quinn. Right. You're gonna have celerity, water walking. So sorcery second for those two. Okay. What's what's the movement speed in um in Indigenous Ingenious Hunter, I believe. Yeah, that called. one. You're gonna have Ingenious Hunter, so you have passive movement speed as well. Every kill you get. Yep, water walking, celerity, and sorcery tree. Okay. Let's start on your items. First item, Yomus. Okay, for the for the movement speed boost uh, when you act on the active. Okay. Exactly. You also have to have <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you should keep fucking you, you, Okay, second item you have to build, another movement speed item. You go static shift. Static Shiv, another passive movement speed item. It helps with the burst as well. Third item is a Dead Man's Plate. Now, with the passive on Dead Man's Plate, you get extra damage when you proc it. Which is additional movement speed. Exactly. And the only item that I don't build on, on Quinn that I build that isn't movement speed is Storm Razor, only to help with the burst. Okay. Right? Well, we'll have to see where they go that build, Vigo. Of course, I'm not... Honestly, expecting a full movement speed predator quid, we'll have to see in wherever your hopes hold up because it's going to be a Quinn mid. Now, Quinn into Talon is risky. If Talon can get ahead, we all know what a fed Talon can do to a squishy carry. And if you look in their lineup, there is a lot of stuff to squish. Evelyn usually goes for a very squishy, high damage build option. Malphite should be able to survive the burst, assuming that he doesn't fall insanely behind. Kale with that not the redemption, I apologize, with the intervention should be able to live if she procs it correctly and dishes the damage out. But Quinn and Draven, there is no escape. If he gets on top of either of them, I think they just straight up melt. So a little worrying if they if lose control of the mid lane because in the previous, in the week one game, they had a lot of issues in the bottom lane. The enemy AD carry entered the game 26 and one. All right, this is back when Kaiser, yes, Kaiser was extremely, extremely powerful and he's the best AD carry. They, now, they, I think they were the ones that banned Kaisa, so they're not dealing with it. But well, we'll have to see how it goes, because I have faith in Zuckerberg's tournament. I said in the week one game that there is only up from here. There's only Zuckerberg's could only go up, and this is their chance to show us. This is a chance to show us how they improved. 
You know, have they improved as a team? What is their macro play like? What is their micro play like? We'll have to see how that goes. Now, unfortunately, we don't have cameras, but Tico has simply pointed at the fact that it is indeed not a Predator Quinn, but rather an Electrocute Quinn. Now, I know you are a little upset about it, but tell me about Electrocute Quinn. Where does, what is the ideal combo to proc the Electrocute here? All right, so obviously you don't have the movement speed to catch up with an enemy who is trying to escape, especially Talon, who can jump over walls. But Venetus is going for the burst damage. So with Ignite, with Electrocute, the best combo to go in is use your ultimate, catch up with the enemy, then you want to auto-attack E, auto-attack Q. That'll proc Electrocute very quickly, plus a bit of extra damage with the extra E auto-attack. And so that's going to be a huge amount of burst that I'm expecting from Venetus. Now, another interesting one that I've spotted right here is the real Batman 15 with the Grasp of the Undying. Okay, so I'm going to go on a limb and say that real Batman 15 is the exact same player we had in the week one game. So he's he was originally known as uh, Aaron Thin in the week one game. He played Chaos Support with, I believe, he went for a very unconventional... Um, Keystone. I can't recall what it is from the life of me now, but he went for an unconventional Keystone. So I'm going to go on a limb and say this is the exact same player. Now, if that is correct, then we're not going to see a support. I'm going to see a Doran's Ring start, like we did in the week one game. And it can work. The thing is, we look at Kale and you think stuff, a lot of attacks we can proc graphs quite a lot. And against an Alistair and melee support, it definitely you can definitely proc it off quite a few times. So there is a method to the madness. I really want to see this madness, you know, get, get some life to it. Because we've seen, we've got heal out of the jungle. Like, we, they've opted to go heal instead of the smite. So I really want to see, you know, what they're able to do with this. As it looks like we will be getting ourselves into, like, now, are we going to see any early game shenanigans coming out of either of these two teams, you think? Well, I'm not sure. We do have a lot of potential to be able to do that especially with the alistar especially with the caitlin traps the talent the cane but it doesn't look like they're going to be they're going to do a little bit of cheese here it is a friendly Ooh. but they do not want to lose it yeah exactly this is one of these games where it you want to focus on your improvement and if you lose control of the game five ten minutes into the game it starts to get downhill for you so it makes sense not to admit also neither of these teams bring a huge amount of crowd control level one now they've got an aggressive line of scrimmage here uh, TPS. It looks like they've set themselves up in the river rather than hanging out, you know, in their own jungle. So it's more of a if you invade us, we can counter invade you. And actually, it looks like they are doing a little bit of a cheeky invade. I don't know if whether that's to. It looks like it might just be spot jungling rather than to kill. But we'll have to see where it goes. So it may be a potential blue buff steal. And if they're able to do that, I can get Kane really far ahead because if Kane can free buff an Evelyn. Oh boy, it becomes a little becomes a little painful. Well, Mr. Impaler, he's standing on top of Ward. I don't think he knows that he is, though. New is good Ward there. <laughs> and Daisy, so keep good track of that. Information is key when you look at these type of games. You need to keep track of where your opponent is and what's going on around the map. And it looks like both these junglers will be doing uh, parallel starts. So both starting on the bottom side of the map. Actually, no. I, my apologies, I saw, the, I saw the Allison and thought it was a parallel start. It looks like they have backed away Kane doing the more traditional, but what he does, he solos his Raptors, goes into red buff, and then goes for the blue. But Alistar is hanging around the blue buff quite a lot. I think just out of out of protection, out of fear that there is the potential for a steal. And that's good coordination out of the team being like, hey, there's a chance they might steal this buff. Look at that, look out for it after me, okay? So a really good choice there, I think, from a team, from a team call. And you were right. We do have the Kale starting with the Doran's ring, so that's not gonna be a lot of gold funneling into her. And that's going to be a problem, especially as a Kale. But look at this. And yeah, the, the Ignite going down as well. So that's really interesting. The fact that he was willing, Kirby was able to burn that, well, was willing to burn that super early on. So didn't have any follow-up though. I mean, he used his combo and after that, just couldn't stick on top of the Quinn who leaped away out of danger. So a little worrying that the Ignite is down. There is a huge combat summon that they really want if they want to actually get themselves a kill. But we do have Talon with the extra HP. Silence so just hanging out in bush, however. This is gonna be a little bit of a shove lane up top lane. Just a bit of a bully lane. Yeah, opposite of what Quinn does on... <laughs> I'm joking. Joking. Quinn bullies like a... Uh, a like bad, a horrible person. Yeah, like a horrible person. Just like Zion. 
This is not an easy game for newbies. And no, and partly because it's Scion's damage in Brawl of the Slayer is magic damage. Malphite is one of the best anti-physical damage tanks in the game. I don't think there's any if or buts you can look at that way. The way his passive interacts, the way his W works, gives him additional armor. But he's not being thrown any physical damage at him right now. It's a lot of it is magic damage with the Royal of the Slayer and then the common following it up. So, slight issue for the side of Nui is he is trying to do his best and he's not falling too far behind in terms of CS as it looks like. Syntax decides, no, no, no. These are my, this is my jungle camp. Oh, he does pick that one up and they might be looking for something on Tentacles. He's running away. Red buff has been proc'd. Oh, he uses heal. heal to escape from that one. But he wants to go ham. He's just going to be able to back away from this one fairly easily. And forces the Evelyn out of her jungle. Evelyn, when she gets to dictate the pace, when she's doing the gank, she... <laughs> when Evelyn gets to dictate the gank, she's really strong. Because you don't know she's there until it's too late. But once you see Evelyn, once you know where she is and she's getting that allure up, some of her threat is lost. So, Kane and Evelyn in a straight up fight, I think Kane wins. But if Evelyn's able to be the one to dictate the fight, as Impaler is just beating away on New Wiz. Oh, he doesn't have much mana left. He's going to take a turret shot back away from that one. It's not an easy lane for this top lane, is it? No, it's it's not. How is he going to be able to help with it? How is he going to be able to deal with the amount of pressure that the Scion's doing? Um, realistically, he needs to pick up his next item. He needs to pick up at least the core pieces of his next item, because there's no real way you can dodge Roar the Slayer. It's really difficult to dodge the Roar of the Slayer unless you've got like inhuman levels of prediction. You can't react to the Roar of the Slayer realistically in time. It's especially as a Malphite, you're simply not quick enough. So I would suggest he needs to start picking up some form of life regeneration. Now whether that's, you know, anti-magic damage such as the Spectre's Cal, or it is something like something that builds out of the reju rejuvenation bead, that's really up to new wits. But I think something to help him sustain in the lane or even a door and shield to handle the poke. Something to help him sustain in the lane. Because this damage right now, it's not going to kill him, but it's going to poke him out low enough to the point where he's going to force unfavorable backs and unfavorable teleports. Now this is an interesting bot lane. Alistar, the Holy Milkman. That's a really... Yeah. It's the perfect name for it's an Alistar. It's the perfect player. name for an Alistar. You know? But the Holy Milkman, he's not playing very aggressive right now. So this is, this is interesting. Why... One, why wouldn't he play aggro in this lane? Punishment. When an Alistair goes in, he uses his entire combo and he's out. So, and you look at the other side, if he engages into a Draven and Kale, and they don't secure a kill, that is two ranged damage threats hitting away on your Alistair who can't fight back, hitting away on your Caitlyn who can't out damage two DPS sources. So, while you look at an Alistair, you think to yourself, why isn't he going in? It is actually the best play to make because if he engages and fails, he's gonna he's gonna die and probably burn a summoner or two. So why would you take what is what is what I would definitely consider as an unfavorable un, as unless unnecessary risk over the fact of hey, let's simply play safe and I can look for picks later or in around the mid-game when we have better vision control. That seems to be the better option than forcing a 2v1 where you have one damage source and they have two damage sources. Especially because if you look on the side of the Zuckerbergs, none of them are low enough. If you force an engage against full health bars as Alistar without someone who is insanely ahead, it is not a favorable trait to be making. Now, annoying gamer, he's doing really well to keep up with the Caitlyn. Looking at the CS difference, there's only four CS difference between these two AD carries. And... We've got CS differences, we've got a... Oh, actually, it looks like a bit of a fight in the middle. Teddy is being denied his red buff. They know where the Evelyn is. And like I said earlier, if you know where the Evelyn is, her threat is gone. She can't out-damage a Kane, especially when Kane's ducking and diving and dodgeballing his way through the jungle camps. Who, that looks like a free red buff, which is disastrous. You can't be giving over your major objectives like that this early on at seven minutes. Speaking of not being able to dodge, he just got you wrong. He was just dodged a Scion E. Yeah, that's right. You were. <laughs> Oh, never mind. I yeah, 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 okay. But we do have <laughs> Quinn. Oh, Quinn. He's dishing a bit of damage at his first one. <laughs> I reckon that was an electrocute kill. That was definitely an electrocute kill. The auto attack landed and it pr it oh. procked the double hit proc off of Quinn, the Harrier, I believe it is called, and then the electrocute took place because I'm going to assume that that counts as two autos instead of one. It does. Therefore, procking the electrocute. I don't. Hey, I don't think that Syntax was ready for that amount of damage to come out of the Quinn, who didn't even use her Ignite. 
Now, I and I use Predator Quinn as a religion. You know, I might actually. <laughs> Are we gonna start preaching? I might actually try and like you, Quinn. So you're telling me that Venetus is making you a believer? I am a believer. First blood going over to Quinn. She has my respect. It did, and she has a little more than your respect. She has a nearly 25 CS lead over this town, which, when you look at the matchup, isn't overly surprising. Uh, melee assassins really struggle in to ranged opponents, and typically in mid lane, you get ability power assassins. So something like a Syndra, something like an Oriana, who most as AD assassins have increased magic resistance, base magic resistance, to deal with that. But their armor is pitiful. I believe Talon's armor is like 24 to 26, somewhere in that ballpark in the first couple levels, which explains why he is struggling so much. And I have to ask the question, he's built Moby Boots, but he's not roaming. Would Ninja Tarby perhaps be the better option if he intends to go for a proper laning phase? Yeah, exactly. Moby Boots would help with mobility if he wasn't getting constantly shoved and harassed in his lane and under turret. Now, look at the wave clear that Quinn has. Actually, never mind, he's getting jumped upon. Good flash coming out from Ventinus. However, looking up this top lane, we have Evelyn. Impaler in mind, a little bit of trouble there. The Scion is in love with the Unstoppable Force. Oh, oh no, the Alliance is not led. Unfortunately, Impaler will not be making it out of this oh. place. Surely, no, he has been in this place before, and he chooses life. He gets away with the Unstoppable Onslaught. One problem there. Tentaclus had the ultimate. He had Last Caress available, but... I think it's one of those things where you don't think you need to use it. Because if we look at that scenario, we thought he was gone. And I'm willing to bet that the Zuckerbergs thought that exact same thing. They look at the fact that, hey, he's trapped, he's out of position, we should be able to get in the way. They didn't take into account the fact that he has access to that ability and he gets away. So it's super unfortunate that he did. But on the consolation prize, they didn't burn any summoners to get the kill. Yeah, but Kane is in this mid lane now. Maybe looking for something a bit aggressive on Quinn or Evelyn. But Evelyn has hit level six. So, I mean, I was talking about level six, um, the ultimate before, but Evelyn not being able to see her is a lot more dangerous now. Definitely, because you have to play with that level of tech. Now, look on the bottom side jungle. There are wards everywhere. There are three red wards in the bottom side jungle, which means that they are aware and they are adapting to the strategy. They, hey, hey, Evelyn is a risk. We can, we, her biggest threat, as I've said previously, is not knowing her location. By identifying where Evelyn is in which, quadrant of the jungle, you can keep track of her and you can make her impact minimum. Now, they know she's on the bottom side, and look at the pings! Look at the pings on the map! They know that she's moving across the river right now. So their bot lane should be backing up a little bit. Get vision in their jungle. She's hit the Scryer's Boom, which means they know Evelyn is in their jungle now, and this level of tracking is really, really good, especially against an Evelyn whose gank paths and jungle pathing is really hard to read once she, get, once she becomes invisible. Well, Talon looks like he's trying to wear him down towards his bot lane. He's looking a bit aggro, just getting a lot of vision in this Evelyn. As you said before, vision on this jungler is essential. But look at where Kane is, counter jungling like a boss. Look at the vision all throughout Evelyn's jungle. She's not going to make a move without them knowing. Exactly, and look at her score. She's 0, zero, zero. She has not been able to have much of an impact. Admittedly, no one has had too much of an impact on this game in terms of the productivity top lane has simply been a slugfest. Mid lane, yeah, mid lane has been, been a lot of trading, a lot of damage. Um, the one consolation for the side of TPS is that they do have themselves an ocean drag. <laughs> they do have themselves an ocean dragon, so a little bit of sustained in lane. And Nguyen, New is tried to put a push in that ward. Unfortunately, it's just outside. Oh, no, that's, that's inside the ward. You sure? That's, yeah, that's definitely inside the bush. Uh, I gotta check this. All right, we gotta go check this, but I am. Oh, look, at the game the bottom lane. The flash instantly for the Draven, not risking it, and they're forced back away. So that is a summon the down. If they can get Kane and maybe even this Talon to the bottom side of the map, they can definitely force a kill down here. So I would really, really like it, as we do confirm it is in the brush. It's not. Yeah, it is. You can't see. It's in the brush. It's not in the brush. Yeah, it is. Look, look, look. You can't see inside. <laughs> You're getting really... You walked in and out. You can't see inside the brush. All right, you can't see inside the brush, Tika. Are you happy? Yeah. All right, okay. Good boy. All right, so, but tell you what's also gonna make you happy. Look at the item. Oh my God, I was talking about it before. We're seeing four people approaching the bottom lane. They've burnt the flash in the dragon. The intervention is up and available, but if they execute this tower die properly, oh, I don't know, coming out as well. They're going right onto it. The intervention is not popped in time. And looks like the, it, oh no, intervention was not popped, nor was the heal coming out of Batman, which is 
really disastrous. They needed those summoners. Neither heal nor intervention goes out. And that should be free bottom turret. Yeah, two heals still available. One flash still up. I mean, using that flash would have been useless because Kane can just follow you anywhere. But they still had two heals available. It might not have kept them alive. Oh my lord, Molly Milkman tanking the turret forced to flash. He was face tanking the turret for so long that he was forced to flash out of there. So, quite a bit of confidence coming in out of this Alistair. But on the bottom side, Yomu's Ghost Bleed complete. Stinger completed for this Kale. And on the side of Caitlyn, she's building towards that Storm Razor, but she just hasn't been able to complete it yet. So, this is the change of the AD carry items that, you know, brought life to this double bruiser bot style that is uh, quite prevalent right now. Now, we do see two Yomu's on the side of. Zuckerberg's right now. We have Yomu's where it belongs in Quinn's item inventory slots. And we have the Yomu's on Draven. Not necessarily something you always see, but it's an interesting difference. So typically Draven's right now go rush a bloodthirster, no apologies, rush a BF sword and then either go into a bloodthirster or a guardian angel first. Now that's typically what you see out of Draven. It's high damage, it's high sustain, and it is really, really annoying to deal with. So that's typically what you see as we see an invade on the bottom side jungle, stealing away yet another major camp away from Tentaclus, who's just having a really rough day. So this Draven build is less focused on a lot of axes and making these axes hit super, super hard. Yeah, but while uh -oh. Evelyn is clearing the blue buff down in the bot side jungle, oh, no. Zion Train is coming in, knocking up the Malphite, the god of knockoffs. Ultimates have been used. Talon picks up the kill onto New Wiz. And that was just a dirty play up top lane. I mean, it, you, dirty is definitely one word for it, but the way I see it is smart. Ooh. Oh, Quinn's coming oh, in. Oh, flash. Forced away by Syntax. Exactly, so that was a really good flash to avoid the like the possibility of counteraction. Now, we're seeing the allure come out, but I don't think anything's going to come of it. I really like the fact that they're using this dive comp now. We look at their team. Uh, the, the, apologies, the cane is a fantastic way to juggle uh, turret aggro, same way you look at an Elise. He can start tanking and then back out of the tanking with his ultimate uncle trespass. Look at the shadow assault that comes out of a Talon. He can pretty much pop out of nowhere, one shot you and get out before you realize he's killed you. So I really like the fact that he's now using his mobility boots and oh, Tentacles uses that last caress. I think he's a little lost. I think he may have forgotten which side of the jungle he is on because parkour from oh. Talon and looks like the Hail of Blaze is... Yeah, Hail of Blaze, that's the wrong item name. Well, all that's happened, there's a free push bot because Draven and Kale are top. Yeah, it's unfortunate. There's, they're going for that second tier turret, getting quite a bit of damage on it. Chappy with that extra attack speed. Oh, Quinn. Quinn is down to this bot side, looking for something dirty on this on the Caitlyn, but unfortunately, a good trap placement coming out from Jeff. Exactly, making sure the Queen does not have access to the flank, so Quinn is now gonna hold the bottom side, and oh, it looks like Draven is in fact gonna be coming around for the party. He pops the Yomu, stand aside to this Draven, the glorious executioner wants to claim his first victim of this game, but it doesn't look like he's gonna be able to. The Caitlyn, 90 caliber net, does survive, and it looks like they may be rotating, rotating up for the dragon, which is a mountain dragon of all things, which, Oh boy, they're struggling to hold on to their turrets now. It's gonna get worse. Yeah, it is going to be bad. Oh, she gets caught out so bad as Thy Kirby picks it up. New is going ham on Mr. Impaler. Down in the bot side, the real Batman is going to die to three of them. The annoying gamer. Actually, oh, the real Batman. Ace in the hole? Ace in the hole is game. Yeah, taking... The real Batman just barely dodges that one as he wasn't the intended target, but he almost got caught in it anyway. I think you should have targeted the real Batman of that one and forced the annoying gamer to step back into it. But Quinn, yes, you've got a lot of productivity, you've got a lot of roaming. You need vision to roam. If you're roaming without proper vision control, unfortunately, well, we saw what happens when you do. You uh, run face first to four enemy champions and die almost immediately. So, not that good. If you look at Quinn's items, though, she looks like she's going for the Storm Razor, which is an item that Caitlyn has already picked up. We're expecting to see the rapid fire coming, coming out of the Caitlyn. It's, if you look at the side of items, it's really looking good for TPS, who have really started to, almost, basically every single member of their team is most, like, has their first item, and at least got pieces of their second. Yeah, and Tentaclus has been spotted in this bot side. 
Quinn is forced to go back into the mid lane, make sure that Talon is under control. He's been doing a lot of roaming lately, more than the Quinn, and this is not something you want to see as a Quinn. Exactly, but it is what you want to see as a Talon with the mobility boost that he rushed in this phase. It is unsurprising to see the fact that, yeah, he's finally using his advantage, and with the Dusk Blade of Drakthar, with that passive, he can ensure that he's not being seen when he doesn't want to be. So it makes a lot of sense that he wait. It doesn't make. Right, it doesn't make a lot of sense that he waited so long to start roaming, but if you look at his items, you can see why Duskblade is important for his roaming capacity. As we're seeing, the top lane turret from this AP Malphite is just not able to guard it. He has his catalyst, which we know is going to be able to run of ages if last if week one has anything to say about it. Oh, oh but he does of go course. in for that. The Heavenlin is in this mid, mid lane, so oh, he can't finish anything. Mr. Impaler, one more. Oh, no, he not does again. <laughs> again, as he goes unstoppable away from the mouth I knew with. That's unfortunate. And what all that happened, they sent Kane into the bottom lane who has opted to transform into Ra. So a tanky frontliner who He's not going to be one-shotting anybody, but he's going to be buying enough time for Chappie and Kirby to be free-hitting away. And he's still spit-pushing bot lane. They have eventually, they have decided to send Venices towards him. And I don't think that Venices has the damage to kill this Rast right now. And he's letting him go. Yeah, it's not the best idea to take a fight as a Quinn in the mid-game. Uh, but with Yomos, with the BF Sword, hopefully he can get a bit of damage. Malphite New is on the side looking for something a little bit cheeky. Doesn't have ultimate, however, so can't get much from it. Exactly. It's really difficult for Malphite to get access to the backline without that unstoppable force because once he uses that, he's just a tank. You don't, like, he's not something like a Maokai or something like a, oh, Ross is in the, Kane's in the backline. Ross Ooh. is, oh, interrupts behind enemy lines, which is quite ironic considering where Ross was <laughs> during that channel. Yeah, heal has been used, however, Tentaclus. By Tentaclus, so that's going to be one one of the three heals being being used now no other heals are available exactly the other two heals were used in the bottom lane play that we saw earlier so no heals available flashes and intervention are all available as it looks like we may be getting a mini aram sort of deal going on and i think both teams are just waiting for their key cooldowns to come off before they look for the pick off so they really want to ex they, uh, for the side of zuckerbergs they need that unstoppable force they need that initiation coming out of the malphite and on the other side they're waiting for mr Im mr impales uh, sorry, Mr. Impaler, he's waiting, they're waiting for his unstoppable force because they need that to be one of their key starters. Now, look where he's positioned. He's positioned all the way back with the inhibitor, which, I mean, it's going to look amazing when he gets there. And that's definitely, that sounds like the channel. We can hear him coming in. He's been in his way. Why they going? Oh, he's eating. Lands on the tank. Knock up. One, knock up. Oh, my lord. All the knock ups coming in. They finally got next to the back. Another knock up. A new reason, unfortunately, is the last caress picking up the talent, but it is not enough. It looks like Ace the Hole coming in through the Allison diving into the back line. It's Umbral Trespass, he's trespassing, Syntex takes what he wants, but it looks like he's going to be taking one more kill. Four members of the Zuckerbergs dropping, which from a really fancy engage, where the talent goes in first, and then the rest of the team says, hey, we can follow this. That was a really, really good disengage by Malphite, a five-man ultimate. Unfortunately, he doesn't have a Yasuo on his team, so he can't turn that around. But they are going straight for Baron, and I'd they can't, they have no contestion on, on the side of Zuckerberg, so they might be able to take this fairly easily. Oh no, the, remember the change of the Baron recently, Baron doesn't hit you as hard, he simply takes a while to kill. Now, the issue here is being no members of the Zuckerbergs are able to actually intervene. No one's going to be stopping him from stepping in, so it's unsurprising the fact that... Well, that do secure the Baron, and that is going to be... A Baron secure, yes, I said it twice, with the Ocean Drake and a Mountain. And a 10k gold lead. Dang. This is really bad for Zuckerbergs. Now, there is a consolation for the Zuckerbergs. Now, of course, look at this game and you think to yourself, well, Zuckerbergs are in a disastrous position. They're losing. Can I note that in week one, the Zuckerbergs lost in 21 minutes. This is week four. We're at 22 minutes. And yes, they are down a significant amount of gold, but they're still in. So this is a huge improvement from a team who, in the very first week, showed a lot of struggle, showed a lot of issues. They've survived, and they have definitely improved in the last couple of weeks. So this is a fantastic trend to see. The fact that, yes, they may not be winning their games. Yes, their champion pools haven't really grown too much. We're still seeing Draven, Kale, and the Malphite, which is AP, as we did in the Week 1 games. But we're seeing progress in some variation. We're seeing the Unstoppable Force. Oh my god, Shadow Assault as well. 
Oh, down in the spawn lane, however, Kane is going in. He gets Syntax version 2, one of the kills. And the young one is picked up by the Alistar support, stopping any turret damage on this first tier turret down bot side. And this is not a position you want to be in, but it's much better, as you said, than they were in week one. Definitely. So improvement from week one is without a doubt existing. Now they need to see, well, what do we improve now? This is what this team is going to be focusing on when you're all really struggling. And this goes from team play to hell even solo queue. Focus on one aspect of your game that you think is losing is losing it. So for example, this game for the side of Zuckerbergs, they can think to themselves, well, what's one of our issues? Well, part of the issue is lane pressure. Your top laner has not had a lot of lane pressure. He's, um, oh, oh Quinn, you're gonna get knocked up. He did. Syntax knocked back, and that's a good disengage by Quinn. A little bit of a BS sort of ability there. I mean, I don't see how it is, but on the bottom side of the map, they've lost complete control. They need to do something. It looks like he wants to go in, but they need to force something. Baron is taking their base. They're gonna lose their inhibitor at this point, and they've lost their turret. They've lost their inhibitor now. They need to do something. They are bleeding out right now to this Baron buff, and. They haven't got a whole lot of wave clear. Just to, where's the solution? Between the hex flash interrupted. Oh, holy holy man. man! He's popped the unbreakable will, but unfortunately this will will be broken as Vanish has claimed his second kill of the game. Tentacles a little bit lost, not guarding his base. Yeah, and he's left the rest of his team to defend against this inhibitor turret. This oh, defend their inhibitor turret while they have the rest of the team going towards top, rotating towards top. While it looks like Sion's backing off again waiting for the unstoppable. Indeed, so we talked earlier, they need the unstoppable. Uh, fortunately, Malphite has yet to complete a single item. He had, he bought, first bought the boots, he then picked up a Catalyst, a Sheen, and is now sitting on a giant spell. So, new ways, unfortunately, you really need to start getting some full items under your belt. If you look at everyone else in the map, they've got at least one completed item, other than the real Batman, who has gone for a very unconventional KO build with the Double Stinger, which... I mean, I can see the theory, but you really want to be getting getting access to that Nash's too. Sorry. <laughs> we do have the Quinn that did volley onto... Oh, volley. Bounce on a minion instead of the champion, so that's a bit of a mistake there. But there... But we do have the... Uh, there we, yeah, we do have TPS High School. They're just going to back uh -oh. away from this, regain themselves, and look for another push. Exactly, and that's all they need to be doing. They don't need to force the fight, although the fights should go in their favor. They can simply play around the minion waves. Zuckerbergs have really shown a weakness to the fact that they aren't fully capable of managing their minion waves effectively. As we see all five members down here, which means there's no one top, there's no one mid clearing the wave. So, all TPS need to do is now play a macro game of League of Legends. They need to say, hey, we don't have to force fights, we can simply take objectives that we see on the map. They've taken the middle and they've taken the middle middle inhibitor turret. They're going to be taking the middle inhibitor, surely, but no Baron's worn off, and in fact, they don't feel comfortable pushing in this far. They're a little worried that if they get one team fight against them, it could fall apart. No, it is a smart call coming out from TPS. They don't have their entire team with them. They have the Kane still dealing with their blue buff and the rest of his jungle. Not that he needs to. Look how much CS he is ahead of his lane opponent. Not his lane opponent, jungle opponent. Exactly. He's got a, he's got effectively a flame horizon over this Evelyn who has really been struggling. But if we look on this other side, there is a <laughs> there is almost a flame horizon in the mid lane. Venetus 213 CS is nutty considering we're in a 26 minute game like that is ridiculous levels of farming that is very impressive he's got the storm rays he's got the yomos building towards a static ship i like this build exactly so it's, it's a bit of a, a bit of a movement speed bit of high damage so we'll have to see maybe he's maybe he's listening to you and thinking yeah you know what i can definitely make this build work so we'll have to see where it goes on the other side talon has completed his own yomus ghost lady he has himself the duck blade dusk blade of draft bar apologies and whoa. Every time I see the talent jump forward, I get a little bit excited. But unstoppable onslaught is available. But while this is happening, what are my minions are crashing into those? They need to send someone to go deal with that, or they're gonna lose a Nexus turret. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna be, they're gonna have to lose a Nexus turret. No one is responding to that quick enough. They're dealing quite a bit of damage, and now Tendiclus is going in on the Quinn. They're trying there, but in comes the talent. In comes the Kane as well. The ultimate has been used. Thy Kirby has picked up Tendiclus. Mr. Impaler has impaled the bird as down goes a bird woman. Indeed. 
Quinn for all your movement speed. You cannot be caught by CC. And unfortunately, when she does, she just melts. And it looks like going right all the way in. Oh my lord, here comes the Scion. He gets himself one knockup. Annoying gamer doing his damnest, but the exhaust is dropped down onto him. And it is not going to be enough. A double kill to conclude the game. The Zuckerbergs, they've held out six minutes longer than they did in their first week game. And that is is a damn good move. Like, when you look, compare, when you compare their scores, compare their CS, compare their record, that is pretty damn good. We have, we have a triple stinger coming out from Kale as well. That's a very, very in... Indeed. <laughs> yeah, so we do have a clip coming out. Thanks, Pronome. We do have a clip coming out from him. The bush, the ward in the bush was not in the bush. I'm not going to say anything about that, but the thing that, the thing that I am going to say, guys, is that is going to be uh, it for tonight. We do apologize that we could not spectate the originally planned game of North Lake Senior Campus going up uh, go, wait, was that the right game? Yeah. Uh, against Applecross Senior High School Team B. We do apologize about that, but unfortunately, well, that's just the way that things go. So we do thank you very much for joining us tonight for the first game at 5.30 o'clock. 5.30 and of course this game now so thank you very much for joining us of course a huge thank out to high school esports league and of course the schools and parents everyone who's supporting this event it's really it's really it's, it's amazing to see the fact that you know you can bring esports into high school so on a thank you of that that is going to be it for the night my name is Yuaniatos Reed I'm joined with Benjamin Tico Lee have a lovely night